John the 10th chapter. We're also happy to have Brother Sister Tomlin back there somewhere. And her daughter may still look at her house. We want them to find one. If you know of something, tell them about it. I've got quite a bit to read, so I'll let you sit this time. Jesus is talking here, and when he talks, we better listen, and uh, hell has to listen. I know all heaven listens. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. How many ways does that sound? Sound like 700 ways. But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And then to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. I like that. Remember that he'll lead you if you're his. He'll always lead you right. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. That great to think of Jesus walking before us, leading us through the hills, over the hills, and through the valleys. You can all you can mark it down. He is the world's best leader. And the Bible said, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of a stranger. It pays to flee from the wrong voice because it's false prophets everywhere, false teachers. They're always trying to lead people astray. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, surely, surely, I say unto you, I am the door. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastors. That's uh, that pastor he's talking about. It's God's pastor. And you can mark it down. Everything that a human being could need is there. It's in his pasture. 
The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for this people. We pray the Holy Ghost will overshadow us now and speak the word only. For it only will work the miracle that you want to work here today. In Jesus' name. I want to talk to you, you could already guess, about the doorway to the supernatural. You've heard it over and over, who the door is. I am the door, he said. No man can enter in to the eternal spirit, only through me. Read in Luke. Talks, Jesus said, Go and tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high, until you be clothed with the power of the Holy Ghost from heaven. Acts 1 8, you'll receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you to speak with tongues, to prophesy, to cast out devils, to heal the sick, and to witness to the lost around about you. We have been spoiled, learned over the years by just being taught the baptism of the Holy Ghost is just to save you only. It's that all right, but take the only off. It's the door into the supernatural where things begin to happen. If you have the Holy Ghost, you're already in the door, which is Jesus Christ, into the spirit world of God ready to see it happen if you only believe. So the baptism of the Holy Ghost is far more than just to save. It's to heal you completely and bring the mind of Christ into your mind and the spirit into your body and into your life that you may do the works that he did and greater works because he went back to the Father. Now I read here in 1 Corinthians 16 and 7, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, that is, the Holy Ghost. The testimony of Jesus Christ gave orders go tarry until you be endued with power from on high and 120 did just that then it said in the 31st that you come behind you know what that means come behind and no gift after you walk through the doorway into the supernatural you're in the realm of the Spirit where the gifts operate. And he is saying here, I don't want you coming behind, falling short, so that you come behind in no gift, that's every one of them, waiting for the coming of the Lord. That is really saying to us, 
the gifts of the Spirit, the fivefold ministry, is all in full action in the world until he comes and takes his church away. And all of his plans then, I do not know, but I know what his plan for the church is today, and I know what it is for you if you have repented and been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, you're now inside the door into the realm of the supernatural, ready for gifts to operate, calls to come ringing into your ears, hearing his voice, behold, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. And now I send you, I command you to do this and to do that. Second Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. All the Lord did was just to make a man a new creature for his own self and save him and then set him on the shelf. That would be a very selfish thing, wouldn't it? And he didn't do that. And I hope you don't think that way. You're a new creature. Old things you used to do. All the things you used to do. You know, we used to hear old-time preaching such as this, God won't dwell in an unclean temple. God won't dwell in a whiskey house. God won't dwell in a nicotine house. And God won't dwell in a gambling house. This is the house I'm talking about. He won't dwell in a whiskey house or a dope house or a nicotine house. He wants a clean house. Amen. And that's what he said. All things have passed away. All that old whiskey and drugs and nicotine and cursing and lying and stealing has passed away. And now we're new creatures with new habits, new desires, new ways. Everything is different today. Praise the Lord. Jesus fulfilled prophecy every day concerning him. From the foundation of the world, it was outlined all the way through to his death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. And he just fulfilled scripture. And every miracle that you find in the Bible, it was already prophesied. God planned everything that's in that Bible. Now there's a lot of things Jesus did that's not in the Bible. Just routine, helping people on the side here and there. But there's one book in the Bible that's not complete. And that is the book of Acts. The church is still writing the book of Acts for 2,000 years. I don't know who all will be in there. I don't know what all will be in there. God has chosen to continue writing this book for the generations to come in the millennium and throughout eternity to read. And there are men and women that's called and ordained today to fulfill Scripture. There are certain things that, you know, God raised up Brother Tecla Mary in Ethiopia. And someone was asking about somebody else is trying to imitate this. I said, well, 
I'm not the judge. I don't know whether God's called him or not. If he has, it'll work. If he hadn't, it won't. But there are certain things happening in the earth that's prophesied. And it's only fulfilling what the prophet said would happen. And these things will happen. There'll be a lot of good things happen on the edge and here and there. And a lot of people healed. It'll never be in the book of Acts. It'll actually never been in the Bible here. If all the things Jesus did had been written, the worlds wouldn't have held the books. Of course, that's covered more than 33 years because he's eternal. So if we pray and walk in the Holy Ghost, we'll find ourselves in some cases fulfilling what the prophet said would happen. And I love to find this place. And I have a few times. And it's so easy. It's almost as though you were not there just something God's doing because he said he was going to do it. All right. So God made man to crave the supernatural. See, that's in every human being. He craves the supernatural. That's where science can never stop. It's just always reaching for something that seems like miraculous things. But this day that you and I, we're here in the end time fulfillment of right now some of the greatest prophecies ever prophesied. I'll never forget May the 14th, 1948, when the Jews became a nation. When they lifted the flag of David, for the first time. For over 1,700 years, that part of the country had been just a howling desert for the bats and the owls. But there's something back in the Bible that I'm going to read to you. It said it wouldn't always be that way. Amen. And now, this year, May the 14th, will be the year of Jubilee. And I could preach a sermon on that. I've been reading a whole lot about it. But well, in essence, in Bible times, it was a time when property all went back to the owner. Slaves were released in that every 50 years. But there's a great spiritual meaning in it today. The Jews are about to celebrate again their 50th year, which is the year of Jubilee. And I don't know what all is going to happen. But I know we're looking at two great things happening in the earth. The Jew, the natural Jew, that will rule and reign on earth for a thousand years. But there is a spiritual Jew, spiritual Israel, that you and I, we have become the seed of Abraham because we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ now we are the seed of Abraham and we are spiritual Jews and while something's happening here in the natural world of the Jews for 4,000 years the world has rolled on but now for 2,000 years the church has been rolling on we've had our ups and downs We've had the dark ages. We've learned that false doctrine don't work. And the whole world needs to learn. And in the year of 325, the Nicene Council got together, changed the whole of water baptism. 
from the Lord Jesus Christ, the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The whole church world plunged into darkness. Until 1900, the light again show again. Something's happening to spiritual Israel now. For 1900 years, over 1900 years, she's rolled on the last 98. Something's happening to spiritual Israel. Are we about to have our jubilee? Something is about to happen. We are very close to the greatest event the world's ever known. The resurrection of the dead. Millions will come out of the graveyard. And millions on earth will rise to meet him in the air. We are on the verge of that now. But let's take a look at this natural Israel here in Ezekiel 37. And you can see spiritually Israel here as well as natural Israel. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit, in the Lord, of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them around about. And behold, they were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Been there a long time. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Spiritual Israel began to be known in a great way in 1900. In Topeka, Kansas, I had the grand honor preaching their annual meeting there a few years back and standing near the place where the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues started again in 1900. Now they could have been somewhere but we didn't have any record for in the world. I'm sure there's always been a church a few somewhere or someplace. As I stood there, then in Azusa Street, 1904, then it began to spread. I remember when we came into it in 1925. It would have been counted ridiculous to say. Someday, there'll be in the papers saying that now there's over 500 million tongue-talking Pentecostals in the world. But you know, the same book that over the years we used to look at the old dry bones, I used to sit in an assembly of them. They didn't believe miracles, they didn't believe in healing, they didn't believe the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, they didn't believe gifts of the Spirit, they didn't believe nothing, hardly nothing. And I have, as a boy growing up, I sat there and I watched them 
and they had no gospel of deliverance. The gospel they preached did not bring deliverance from alcohol, did not bring deliverance from sin. It did not bring a life of holiness. It only brought you assurance that you couldn't be lost if you wanted to be. And uh, after being saved, you couldn't be lost if you wanted to be. So we listened to this, and the bones were very dry, naturally. Little gospel. Very dry. But in 19 and 25, an evangelist from the Ritter, Louisiana, came to our town. And we heard that people would get happy and clap their hands shout and uh, so we all went out to see sitting as far back as we could for fear of something terrible happening so we we moved into something where it was action and the manager said you need the Holy Ghost to be saved. And he preached it, and they began to get it. About a hundred received it, speaking with tongues, baptized in Jesus' name. And I got baptized in Jesus' name. I got the Holy Ghost. My mom and dad got it, and all of us. And uh, we went back to the Valley of Dry Bones. We didn't know how no church then. And it was drier then than we thought about dry. I remember one time and it embarrassed me, mom got I don't know what she got, I couldn't see nothing she had me about. But they sang something or another that uh, made her shout. My brother did it freeze. It was a hard breeze. And they told us pretty soon not to come back. That they couldn't handle that, you know. And Dad said to the pastor, I never forget. He said, you know, when a fellow goes off and he prays through and he comes back he don't drink no more he don't cuss no more and then you tell me not to come back he said uh, for the first time in my life I'm fit to be a church member and he said now you kick me out because speak in tongues and shout and don't drink no more and don't gamble no more and the whole works. But I'll tell you what, that some of the old dry bones got prophesied to. And there was about 30 of them in one church, about 20 in another, I believe. Some old dry bones come out. They went the way Pentecost began to shout and praise the Lord. I never forget one of them. His wife, my aunt, had been going to, to the revival, and she was really getting interested. And so she got ready that night. She started out the front, and there Uncle Charlie stood with a club. 
said, you don't come out the gate. You ain't going there no more. She went back to the house. Let him cool off. The next day, she said, Charlie, I don't do nothing no more. I said, if you do, I'm leaving you. She said, I found what I want over there. And I'm going. If I live or you don't live with you, it's up to you. But don't try to stop me no more. Well, he didn't. He decided to go and see what in the world caused anybody. You know, his bones are so dry, they rattle. But I want you to know old Uncle Charlie. He too got the Holy Ghost. Amen. We got the Holy Ghost. And all over the place, the old dry bones begin to move. Praise God. Shout and talk in tongues. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You didn't need to advertise our revivals. Had no need of advertising. Didn't we didn't have radio? And we didn't get a newspaper once a month, maybe. There's no way to advertise it. But I'll tell you a way to advertise it. Some of us live four or five miles out in the country. Wagon load after wagon load. Seen five or six wagons on the road going to the revival. And of course, when they got over there and the old dry bones got some meat on them and spirit in them and life in them, we went back home two o'clock in the morning, people shouting, talking in tongues. We woke up all the dogs and cats and cows and neighbors and everybody. What in the world is going on? What in the world? Uh, they was waking up the old dry bones, praise God, and a lot of them got in their wagon, and they went. There's just something about the real Holy Ghost. It still works. We need to get enthused about it. Praise the Lord. Anyway, we can skip on down and show you what he was talking about here. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. For over 1,700 years, Scattered all over the world were the Jews. And now he said, I'm in the end time. I'm coming back. And the prophets are going to breathe upon these bones. And they're going to rise up out of the graves and come home. And for the from all over the world. And they still are. And they'll continue to come home. Because that's their home. That's their Canaan land. But spiritual Israel is getting ready to go home. Hallelujah. We preached about it. We prayed about it. Now, since 1925, and the whole spiritual Israel since 1900, and now 98. Two more years, and we'll hit 2,000. I don't know which map, which uh, uh, calendar is right uh, on just a time. It could end today, it could end a year or two after. I don't know when, but I know one thing. Just like there's a move on 
And naturally, the old Jews in Russia have been battling for years to get out of there and come home. All over the world, some way, somehow, we got to go home. Who put it there? Who put it there? Who put the call there? God called on the back. He said, I know you're scattered. I know you're dry. I know all hope is gone. But I'm going to put it back in there. I'm going to bring you back home. And in 1998, you're going to be celebrating your jubilee. But I got another work going on in the world. Amen. The old dry bones around the world is being touched by the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I could have never dreamed of anything so great as has happened in the church world today. Many, many, many of the churches, one of the churches in town, I understand. Telling some of them, said, if you've got to speak in tongues, go to that other room back there. You can go back there. Well, we're, we're growing. Amen. And one day, the real Pentecostals have all the big rooms. Praise God. Hallelujah. And they'll be in the side room. Because the Bible said, in the end time, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and the whole earth will be filled with my glory. Well, they don't all have all the truth. We may not either. We come nearer than anybody else, I believe. But there may be something in there we need to obey yet. We need to search and pray. But I believe the Lord is doing a work in the world. He's not filling all these people with the Holy Ghost that don't have something in mind. He's got something in mind. Amen. We were in the same fix till 1915 after it fell. We could have been branded just like some of the charismatics today from 1900 to 1915. But the revelation came. If he could move into that in 1915 with the divine revelation, one God, baptism in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, he can still do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a day. What a day we're living in. Can't hardly believe our eyes for all the things that's happening. I sat down with phenomenal people, even preachers. Interesting. Got an ear open. And I talked to them about the Holy Ghost and Jesus. Listen to me. Amen. Could name names because you wouldn't be able to bear. You might lose their church. There's a whole lot of preachers in these normal churches got the Holy Ghost in them. And uh, the Bible says, in the end time, he'll also, the voice of the Lord will go forth. Come out of her, my people. Come out of this world out there into the truth. See, that's fixing to break loose on the world. Come out of her, my people. There's one God. And his name is Jesus. There's churches out there today that has thousands in it that's baptizing in Jesus' name. Right. And we have grown the one God Jesus' name crowd to over 17 million in the world. And what does that tell you? That 
all of a sudden the Lord's going to call to that world that's not in the whole truth, come out and into the truth, my children. Amen. After all, do you think it would be harder for them to accept water baptism in Jesus' name than the normal world receiving the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues? Tongues is always the problem. Just can't see them tongues. I say, yeah, I know you can't. You never will till you get it. Amen. Oh, here we are at the end. The end of this age. The coming of the Lord is upon us. I ask you the question. Spiritual Israel, our natural Israel is celebrating their 50th year. Flying the flag of David. What is spiritual Israel? Think of what she's doing, getting ready for the rapture. Are you ready? Are you ready? Better stand if you're not. You have an opportunity to come down here and get ready. It's a gift. It's free. It don't cost you anything. But if you miss the rapture, it's costing you so Sing it. Who would be first to come down and sing? I want to be saved. I know we're living in the end time. I know I don't need to gamble with my soul that'll live forever somewhere. Your soul is going to live forever somewhere, my friend. Forever and forever. Amen. Somebody is being talked to now. The Holy Ghost is inviting you to step through the doorway of the supernatural. You can step through the door because Jesus said, I'm the door. And if you come and knock, I'll open and let you in. He promised that. All right, let's sing it is the church. Mm -hmm.